What's going on, everybody? So today I'm going to talk about how much money can you make with a candy machine. So I have a couple of boxes of candy here. I'm going to show you exactly how much profit you can make in a candy machine. So first of all, we have to set the candy wheel. So where's that bag of gloves at? Okay. <clears throat> Good to get you some disposable gloves. And I'm going to put on some gloves real quick. Got a little bag here. You can get these at Walmart for a dollar, but they're good to have. So I'm going to show you exactly how much you can make here. That way, if you want to know exactly what the profit is, you can see for yourself. So we're going to start with the Vinstar. And I'm just going to fill up one, and I'm going to use Mike and Nikes for an example. I don't have the bottom on here. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set the candy wheel. This is the candy wheel right here. This is what the candy comes out of. Now there's three parts. There's a candy wheel, which I'm going to set inside. And then as you can see right in here, there are little grooves. And there's numbers on here. It says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on this little piece that separates the candy, there's a little groove on here as well. And you see that little notch right up here? See this little notch? This little notch, once I put this wheel in here, when I deal with the Mike and Nikes, I set it on the seven. See the little groove? Or not the seven, excuse me, the five. And it's gonna dispense about seven Mike and Nikes. <clears throat> now there's all type of, you can buy bulk candy of these. You can get them online. And you probably get a better price. But these boxes I get for 98 cents a dollar after taxes is like a dollar five. But there's give or take 80 or so Mike and Ikes in here. If there's 84 exactly and you sell seven per quarter, you're gonna make three dollars out of this box. So what I'm gonna do, I did a video of this before where I counted everything out and in theory told you how much you would make, but I'm gonna show you exactly today. How much you're gonna make with it? So this right here, we're gonna take this piece right here, and there's a little hole in the bottom right here where a screw goes in. And if you look right here, there's a little hole right here where the screw goes in, so you know which side it goes in. So you push this part in here first, and there's some clips back here. So we're gonna clip this in. There we go. Okay, I have the clip and I have it set. It's already set. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put five of these in there. So that's give or take about $5.25. We're gonna see exactly how much it's gonna make. Okay, that's $2. That's $3. That's $4. And I'm not going to fill the whole thing up. $5. We'll just use a few right here. Okay. So we got a couple in here. We got $5 in there. Basically $5.25. So that means I need 21 quarters. 21 quarters to make my money back and anything after that will be profit all right you ready <clears throat> she's gonna put the quarters in I'm not gonna touch the money all right twist it in time. let's see what we got a lot of time you have to turn the first one nothing's gonna come out in the first one because it has to actually set okay so we're not gonna count that first one okay so that's one, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, got a little more than I wanted to come out. I might have to reset the wheel 
to six. <clears throat> but either way, I'm gonna show you. Okay, that's two quarters. At this rate, I'm probably not gonna profit three times as much. So this just lets you see how much you're vending and how much you're gonna make per quarter. Send it in again. Okay, what's this third one? This is the third one. Okay. Three. But this lets you know how to readjust it. All right, go ahead. That's a dollar. Okay. Set it in again. So that's one dollar. That's one box. But I know that I haven't got a complete box out of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it a little lower. Three, six, nine, ten. It's giving out ten right now. So what I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give out seven. And I placed it on the five. I may have to go back and place it on the six. We're going to go through. Let's keep going. That's $1.50 right here. Okay. We got a dollar fifty in. Keep going. Let's go. You can just keep going. Too. You don't have to wait. There we go. Yeah. So now we're set two dollars. Three, six, nine, ten. Yes, giving out ten. We're gonna have to change. It. Uh oh. Let me see who this is on here. Real quick, quick play. What's going on, man? Quick play vending. I appreciate the five dollar super chat donation, man. Awesome, Jamie Farsworth. What's up, Jamie? <clears throat> okay, so what are we at? Two twenty-five. No, this is. Uh... That's two fifty there. Okay, that was two twenty-five. Two fifty. Okay. This is going to let you know exactly what number you need to set it on on your Vin Stars. Okay, so we're at what, 250 right now? Mm -hmm. About halfway there. Let's go. 275. Let's see what we're going to have here. $3. Okay, we're through, we're through three boxes. Let's see what we're going to get here. Yeah, we're live here. Okay, what's that? 325? 350. 350. Is this 375? 375. Okay, 375. One more puts us at four boxes. And you'll still profit even out of this. You can already tell that it's going to be a profit out of this. Okay, here we go. Four dollars. Five more quarters and I've made my money back after taxes. Uh oh, we lost one. One bounced on the ground. Shadow. <laughs> okay. Three more quarters puts us back even. Huh? Yeah, three more quarters. Three more quarters. Two more quarters puts us back even. No. Nah. That's it. One more quarter. One more quarter puts it back even. It's 525. There we go. Okay. And this is even this is even a little bit higher than what I had wanted to set it at. So this lets you know this is what your profit is going to be. And this is set higher than I normally set it at. You normally want to set it on six. I set it on five. I guess I was used to um the MMs, but if I would have set it on six, it would have gave out a little less. It would have gave out seven. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> if you set it at 10, even setting it at 10, you're still going to make a profit, but it does reduce your profit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to pour this in this jug here. And I'm going to go back through it one more time with it set the right way. Okay. Let me spin this thing around because I got all kind of candy falling out. 
Yeah. Okay, I got candy on the ground. Will you grab that one? I don't want to grab it with my gloves. And there's one right there, too. Okay, we're going to readjust this. Now, there's some clips on here. I still got candy coming out of here. Okay. Now, there are some clips on here. Y'all see these clips right here? Sometimes these clips are a pain in the butt to get off. And there's supposed to be a screw in here. I didn't put the screw in because I knew I was going to be adjusting it. But you have to slide these back slightly without breaking them. And pull this off. Okay, there we go. I got one of them. Let me get this one. Okay, there we go. Sometimes this one's a little rough to get off. Okay, I'm going to adjust this one more time. I had it set on the 5. Now, I'm going to adjust it and set it on the 6. So now it's on the 6. You can see the little groove right in there. It's set on the 6. So we're going to try this one more time. Push it in here. And then, we're going to clip this down. Here we go. Okay, it's clipped in. We're ready to go. Huh? No, I just pull this one out. Hold this one right here. Okay, now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put these five boxes that I just opened back in there. We know this is five boxes worth of Mike and Mike. So we're going to see if they come out seven now. Okay, let's try it again. <clears throat> see if we get the numbers right. Sometimes you just have to adjust it a little bit. All right, turn it. Let's see what we got. Okay, remember the first one doesn't count because the first one has to set the wheel. Let me come out on this one. Okay, three, six. Okay, still too many things. Okay, this is better. Three, six, seven. Here we go. All right, seven came out this time. Here we go. Three, six, ten came out again. Okay, let's see here. Seven. Okay, so we got ten, seven, ten, seven. That's one dollar. Okay, that's one dollar. At least it adjusted a little better. Okay, at least it adjusted a little bit better this time. Jamie. Jamie, what's up, man? Okay, seven came out again. Uh-oh, they're bouncing everywhere. Six. Okay, nine. So they're coming out between seven and nine. Let me check here. Six. Seven, eight. Two dollars. Two dollars in this time. Nine. Okay, then we got seven again. That's where I want to be. I want to be about seven. It's adjusting on me. I think maybe one of the uh one of the flaps is a little loose. Okay, this one is nine. And there's my seven. Three dollars. <throat> Might even be able to go down one more. <laughs> okay, how much we at now? Okay, that was seven. Okay, seven again. So it's coming out pretty good. Now we're going to see what the profit is. That's four? $4. Okay, this one's going to make a lot more. So we need five more quarters to break back even. And and this is just putting five boxes in there. If I fill it all the way up, you can see what will be left for the profit. You want to try to, you want to at least double your money. I try to triple it with seven, giving out seven a piece. On the Mike and Mike's. I tri Whoa, that one came out a lot. Sometimes it has to do with the way you turn it as well. That was like 12 that one. Okay, now we're back to nine. <clears throat> okay, so what's that? We got two more. Last one? one more. Okay, last quarter. Here we go. And whatever's left in there is profit. And this is just out of $5. Okay, 
Now this is le this is what's left in there. So you're gonna at least double your money with this one. And there are some deals online where you could probably you'll get a lot better deal than this. Sometimes I just go to Walmart and grab these. I get a couple boxes of them because twelve come in the box, and it's like a little less than twelve dollars for these because they're ninety eight cents each. But um, if you get a whole bunch online and you get a big box of them, you could probably even make more money than that profit. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's run it through and see what we got left. Okay, whatever comes out now, this is what's going to be the profit at a five dollars. Okay, she's going to run the quarters through right now, and this is just five dollars, just like an inch up. So we got to, I mean, we could fit easily. Easily 30 of those boxes in there. Okay, now we're back to seven. Now we're back to seven. Okay, seven's coming out. Let's see if we can keep it around seven. Okay, nine, nine again. One dollar. Eight. Nine. Okay, that's one dollar profit. One dollar's profit already. And we got eight that time. Okay, here we go. Seven. Okay, that's a good one. That's what I like to see. But even if you give a couple more, you'll keep more customers, but you still make the money. You keep in track of how much it is? Two dollars. Okay, that's two dollars profit. Okay. She's keeping track of the money. I'm keeping track of the Mike and Nikes. That was seven. Okay, here we go. Seven again. Now it's starting to get back on point. Let's see how much it's going to be. And this is just the Mike and Nikes here. What's that, three? Mm -hmm. Okay, three dollars profit already. I made my 525 back after tax. And I've already made three dollars profit. And there's still a lot of Mike and Nikes left in there. Okay, twist it. Okay, hold on a second. Let me adjust this. Mm. Yeah, okay. You see what happened? See, there's a Mike and Ike stuck there as it's turning. And sometimes that will happen. So, cut it off. Okay, let's try it again. Put it in there and turn it. Okay. Let me throw this one away. Okay, there we go. Okay, turn it again. Okay, hold on a second. Let me do something here. Okay, let me do this here. Okie dokie. I got an issue here. We're going to try this out. I'm going to have to get some new gloves. What's going on, everybody? Mike G is the vending king. Awesome, man. Thank you. Hey, uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on learning. I want to learn everything. So, um, okay, we got a little issue here. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. We got an issue with some of the, some of the candy getting stuck here. And it's the way it's coming down. So, I'm going to get my couple more gloves over here. I just took off. We're going to try this one more time. <clears throat> now, this is the problem you have sometimes with your vending machines that the candy can get stuck. Okay. Hard to get my hand in these little bitty gloves. <laughs> <You're> huge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Okay. Ah. Uh. A little bit of tiny gloves. Okay. It didn't give us any money on the last one. There we go, huh? It didn't give any candy on the last one. Okay, yeah, because the, they're getting stuck in here. Mm -hmm. So let me try this. And sometimes you're going to have this issue with your machines where candy will get stuck. And that's when people complain about it taking money. So, can you grab that one up? Those right there? Thank you. 
Okay, let's try it again. Okay, we're going to keep trying it. We're going to keep going. Always get setbacks. So, Set a minute. Yeah, this is the Vinstar 3000. The two that I feel like I With the tray, definitely. Are we counting them? Huh? The two that I put already. Like no, nah, I don't count those. Okay, let's, so we're going to start four. Okay, let's go again. Let's try it again. Let's just see if we can get it going again this time. Okay, there we go. We're back in action again. All right, here we go. All right. <clears throat> and you can see that it's ripping some of them in half. Uh -oh. It's all right. It's going to happen. It's getting caught on it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're having some issues over here. And the Mike and Ikes are getting stuck in here. Okay. Let's keep going. Put it in and twist it. Okay, it was 450, but now this is going to be 450. Okay. Yeah, you just got to turn through it. It's going to rip them, so you just got to turn through yeah. it. Okay. When those, when those Mike and Ikes fall in there, based on how it turns, once that little square is full, if there's a Mike and Ike that's half in and half out, when you put that quarter in and turn it, it's going to cut. It's going to chop that Mike and Ike in half. So what you got to do with your location, if they're complaining it's taking money or not twisting, you got to tell them they just got to turn it. Because they have to get that wheel to turn and chop that mic in half. Okay, so we're at $5 now? Six dollars? Six now. Six dollars? That's number six? Um, 525 with this one. Five, okay, 525. 550? Five, five, okay, there you go. There you go. Okay. Put it in again. Okay, let's switch. The grab five, fifty now. 50. 575. 575. Okay, so at a $5, we're already at 575 profit. Now, six. What so again, $6, $6 profit. No. Okay. And it's still spitting out a good amount. So, we're at, what is it? Six. $6 even. So I, I invested five twenty-five at tax, and we're already at six dollars, six twenty-five. Okay, this one, that one only gave out three. So somebody be mad there. <laughs> somebody be mad right there. <laughs> okay, there we go. This one, but the next person will be happy because nine came out. Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay, you're seeing where the profit's going. Okay, we're back to seven. Seven. Okay, seven again. Okay, and it won't always exactly be even every time. So, what was seven dollars? Mm -hmm. Seven dollars profit. What? Two just came out. And the reason that's happening is because there's there's um, Mike and Ike's that are stuck right now. No, 725, so we don't find the other one. Right? Uh-huh. There we go. Let's see if two come out this time because there's three slots. And it should be back to the one that they're stuck in. Nope, okay, good. That was the eight. Okay, that's the one that's stuck. No eight. Okay, and eight of them came out. So we're already at eight dollars profit. And we still got plenty in here. There's still plenty of Mike and Nikes in there. And sitting in the bottom, as you can see. There's still at least another another dollar in there. Eight fifty. Okay, we're at 850. 850 profit so far. Uh oh. 875. Hold on a minute, cause we're losing a lot. Yeah. They just they're bouncing everywhere. What is that? Okay, got it. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Nine. Nine dollars. Nine dollars profit, and there's still some in there. Couple. So you can see you're going to at least double your money. And if you're giving out seven, this one wasn't exactly giving out seven every time. It's giving out about between seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And switching it up. But if you can set it up to give out about seven per vend, then you're going to triple your money for the most part. Let me take these off. <clears throat> All right, I just wanted to go in there and share that real quick because people want to know exactly how much it is. And a lot of people say do it by the weight. And the weight is a good way to do it. You know, you can go by how many ounces it is so you can figure it out. But some people are more visual and they want to know exactly what the numbers are. So if you want to know exactly what the numbers are, that's why I do it this way, just for people to see exactly what exactly what the numbers are. But yeah, get you some gloves. These little plastic gloves. You can get them disposable gloves. They got them at Walmart. 98 cent. It's a dollar. So and they they really come in handy. Okay, let me look at some of these comments. Okay. Let me scroll back up here to the to the top. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks exactly like the machine I just painted and uploaded. <laughs> oh, you uploaded one just like this? Who is that? BB. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Same exact color. <laughs> Jamie said, this is why I can't call you. Okay, let me scroll through real quick, catch up on some of these comments. Wonder if I should try those Mike and Ikes. I've never had them. Mike and Ikes work really good for me in a lot of my locations. Mike and Ikes are, are a killer. They um they always seem to go pretty quick. Skittles seem to go real fast. The peanut M Ms they go real fast, and the Mike and Ikes go real fast. And I have a few locations that the jelly beans really do well. I just did a collection on a bunch of my uh my bulk machines and I ran around and I did a bunch of locations between yesterday and today and I got a lot of footage I know I haven't had a, vi a video up in a little while I've been working with this new system but um I got a bunch of footage and I'm finally gonna get some videos up this week I'm gonna try to get some videos up but um flipping profit what's up Mike what's going on flipping profit I like that name <laughs> random person is that his girlfriend she is hot <laughs> awesome thanks let's see here I put her in more of the videos yeah definitely what's up Mike gangster what's up what's up um live stream yup Charles hell what's going on man okay they loving quick play <laughs> I'm cleaning out two triple head machines while I listen. Awesome. What kind of machines you got there? Uh, Heaven's Eagle. Peanut and Manims all day. Yeah. Can you also increase your profits by buying in bulk instead of dollar boxes? X pack 86. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can you can do way more. I'm just showing you the least thing that if you get these at 98 cents each, you're still going to make you're still going to make profit. And, you know, these are probably a little more overpriced. than if you was to get just the whole bag, I actually put on one of my uh, one of my videos. I think it was the last one I did where I actually showed how many um, Mike and Ike's were in a box and calculated the profit with that. I put on there uh a link that you can go on Amazon and they had a bulk bag. It was like eight dollars or something like that for a for a huge bag. And that was one of the greatest, that was one of the best deals I found on them. But if you if you go that way, you'll definitely make more money. I'm just showing you that if, if you do about seven of these per vend, 
You're going to you're going to at least double your money. You're going to make somewhere between double and triple your money. OK, let's see here. This reminds me of the video when you counted them out. Help us learn how to calculate. Uh oh, where did I go to? I hate doing this on my phone because I lose the comments where I'm at. OK, here we go. Um, let me get back up here. There it is. Help us learn how to calculate the profit. This is great, Mike. OK, awesome. There we go. I'm back where we're at. Y'all go check out um, Integrity Vending and Fun. Trina and her son. That's a good channel. I watch them as well. I like what they got going on. They're always going out and getting new locations. and They have a lot of good tips also. Y'all go check out Quick Play as well. <clears throat> Quick Play has a bunch of uh, arcade machines. Y'all want to get into some vending. Like not only with the... With the candy machines or not only with the full line but if you want to try out some claw machines and other type of machines they have a good channel they have a lot of random locations with different machines um they like a variety just like i do love your channel bro but i hate your beanie lol <laughs> you like the raiders yeah <clears throat> uh i just like the color of it i wear it more for the color it doesn't really matter about the team. Okay. Most machines, the turner turns a little, but the Vinstar doesn't even budge unless there's a quarter inside. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Now, if it turns to the left and it free vans, that means that there's, there's a little notch in there that's about, that sticks out about maybe like this. And the notch prevents it from turning back the other way once it clicks. So you have to look at the mechanism if you have an issue with that. If it's turning left or it's free vending and it's not stopping with the quarter, then that means you probably, it's either broken or it's not there. I've had that issue before. I wish I had them Jamie Bonnez views. Dude gets mad love. Yeah, man, he's taking off. He puts up really good videos. He's doing good. He's got a good editing system, too. Mike G. Okay, every time I touch it, I lose where I'm at. Okay, I'm going to scroll on. Mike G, what's up, brother? What's going on, man? Josh Ochoa. Okay, is that a 3,000? Okay, I already saw that earlier. Who's got any of these? Who's got any of these uh Vinstar 3000 machines? Y'all leave me a comment if you got any Vinstar 3000 machines. And if you put Mike and Ike's in there, what number you set it to? What number do you set it to? When you when you set your candy wheel. Or what other type of candies do you put in there? Just don't buy a plastic one. Mike G, your videos are very entertaining. I'm always looking forward to a new video. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Um, Alex Cervantes. I need to get some videos up. I haven't really put up too many this month. I've been kind of behind because, like I said, I, I transferred over to the Adobe system. And I've been working with that one. But I, I got a lot of footage. I, got, I did some collections yesterday and today. Had opportunity to run around to some of my smaller machine locations. My bulk machines. I didn't do any of my full line. Just the small ones and um, got a nice little collection. So I'll be putting up a collection video here real soon. I try to get it done over the weekend. Because of you, me and my kids got into vending machine business along with starting their own vending YouTube channel. As well, big shout out from me and the boys from Kansas City, Scott Art Vending. Awesome, man. I'm glad that you're able to get a business going with your kids where you can teach them the, the value of entrepreneurship. What's good, homie? I see you, Jackson Million. OK. 
Okay. Yo, flipping. I do customizing. Mike G and Jamie inspired me to get this money too. Awesome, man. I'm glad everybody's starting to get everybody who was on my channel, all my viewers, subscribers, getting motivated to, to make that extra money. Get some extra side businesses going. I might start adding a few more things in myself. Like I said, I'm going to start adding some things in about YouTube as well. Different ways to make money on YouTube. Hey, man, love the vid. Started doing vending in January with charity honor boxes. Already secured over 100 locations. Wow. Since January? you not playing. I also started a YouTube channel on my collection so far. $500 over the weekend. Nice. That's all it takes. Just, just getting out there and getting on it. Five away from 100 subs. Compton in the house. Juan Conejo. Okay. Thanks. Heaven. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's see here. Check out the channel. My next video will probably be me showing how to paint the Vinstar 3000. I'm going to use color shift paint with iridescent glitter mixed in. Okay, cool. I remember I was putting up a lot of videos on painting them when I first started out with them. I have a lot of older videos where I was painting and using different types of paint. Talking about which type of spray paints that I use, which ones that, that ran, and which ones that actually stayed uh, that painted the best and had the best texture. Some of those cheap paints, when you do it, it'll run and it'll leave streaks on your machine. So you want to kind of stay away from those paints with primer in it. I like the Rust-Oleum. That's the one that I use when I uh, have to fix my machines. Let's see here. Okay, it's good to see everybody's YouTube channels growing. I remember when I first started, there were no YouTube channels hardly on vending. A couple random ones. But now everybody's getting into doing a YouTube channel for vending. So everybody gives their little approach to the business, which is cool because anybody getting into the business now, they have a lot of different people who they can go check out to get, to get the answers to the questions that they have. <laughs> Take off that it's San Francisco beanie. <laughs> I will send you a Saints beanie. All right, send it. I'll wear it. <laughs> Big guy Vinny, send it. I'll put it on. It's black and gold. I got a lot of black shirts. Time to get that pinball machine. I, I already got it. I got a pinball machine. I, um, I went and picked it up over the weekend, actually. And... I'm actually doing a little renovation on it. The guy told me in the bar, he said that he wanted it in there. But when I called him about it, he said, um, wait till the first. So around right around the first, I'm going to be doing a video of going to place that pinball machine. And maybe I get a coin pusher or something else in there. Maybe he'll want something else. I have to develop the re relationship with him first. Oh, I got another uh, super chat. Let me see. This is on here. Um, oh. Finally made it to one of your live chats, Taz Mickenstrom. Yeah, I started a little late tonight. Usually I start around 8 Eastern time. But uh, today I started a little late. Everything was kind of going wrong and slowing me up. Let me scroll. Uh-oh. Let me see here who sent this. Thomas Cass. You were up to 60 viewers. But only 19 likes. Something ain't right. <laughs> I think what happens is on there, because when I'm watching when I'm watching the videos live of other people that are on, you can't just hit the thumbs up button on the screen. You actually have to X out of there and go off back to the screen and then hit the thumbs up button. So probably maybe that's why not everybody's tapping the thumbs up button more. A lot of time I go on there and hit it for a lot of the people that I watch. Just to keep them getting um getting YouTube to promote their their video a little more. But yeah, man, thanks for shouting that out. <clears throat> Let's see here. I just got into I just got into it. Bought three Vin Stars and one Dixie Narco. I'm 17. 
Okay, that's good, man. That's good to see you investing your money in something that's going to be positive. You always want to invest your money into some kind of an asset. Too many people waste their money on liabilities and, you know, they always wonder why they're broke. Let's get this money. Definitely. Gano's Vending LLC. Okay, awesome. Is this what you do full time? No, I actually, I don't do anything full time. I got a couple of different things that I, I'm involved in. But um, this is just one of the things that I do. Um, <clears throat> I never want to put all my eggs into one basket. I do a lot of training. I train a lot of people, a lot of elder retired people for physical therapy and uh, physical training. And that's one of the main things that I do. I guess that would be more like my active income job. But everything I do, I work for myself. And then I do, obviously, I do the YouTube. YouTube is also a form of um, income for me now. It's getting to the point where it's, it's really starting to pick up. And um, vending is just another thing that I do on the side as well. But it's definitely grown a lot in the past about, uh, I don't know, year and a half that I've really been taking it serious. Already doing full line. Is it worth it to do small candy machines or should I stick with full line? To me, it seems like taking a step back. Okay, you know what? This, this is my idea on that when it comes to the small machines. Um, I'm definitely trying to make the transition into more full line machines because I'd like to be able to go in and collect stacks of dollars rather than only the quarters. But I do like the small machines. I like all type of machines. And I think that the small machines can be introductory into other machines in certain locations. Or if you do put a, a, a soda machine and a snack machine, maybe you can put a small bulk candy machine right next to it. Um, I think every little way that you can create another form of income is good. Maybe if you get into a plaza where maybe there's like 30 different businesses in there, if you can get maybe like five or six of them in that plaza, Something like that is good because you can collect all the quarters there. And in the beginning, I would go back like every 30 days. And then I realized that sometimes I'd go back like every two to three weeks. I was like more anxious and excited. But as I started doing it more, I realized I needed to wait a little longer. So now I wait like 45 days to 60 days and let it clear out a little more. And then it's like it is more productive. It pays more. Because if I wait 60 days, and that means I'm only going to work six days out of the year. If I go and collect those machines every 60 days, I'm only working on that particular location six days out of the year. And for whatever it's going to bring me. But that's how I look at it. <clears throat> you and Reyes inspired me. Awesome. Reyes, that's my dude. That's my man over there. Uh, Reyes, a good dude. Um, I'm always in touch with Reyes. I remember when Reyes, when I first started talking with Reyes, when he first got into the vending business, he did a, a interview with me talking about my vending business and he got motivated to get him a couple machines and now he's taking off with it. Okay. I have a customization business. Don't use cheap paints. My stuff has to be on point or I lose business. Definitely. Yeah, you never want to use those cheap paints. Those cheap paints make it look bad. So you you already know about that. Boston baked beans are great. Yeah, a lot of time it's about the location. What I do when I go in there, I ask the people. If it's more, you got two different types of location. You'll have either employee driven location or you'll have customer driven location. So if it's just a, a place where there's just a lot of employees and that's the people who's going to be using your machine, then you probably want to talk with the employees there and see what type of candies they like to fill your machine. Whether it's a bulk candy machine like this one here or whether it's um, a snack machine. And if it's customer, then you probably want to go with some form of chocolate, whether it's uh, regular M&M's, peanut M&M's, Reese's Pieces, uh, peanut butter M&M's, some kind of chocolate. You probably want to go with some kind of fruity snack is the other one. If, if you're doing a triple head, whether it's um some kind of candy, whether it's runts, jelly beans, Skittles, Mike and Ike's, hot tamales, whatever you want to put in. 
and then usually some kind of gum, whether it's the large gumballs, small gumballs, whether it's the cheeklets. And that seems to do well because you give an opportunity to do all. Or you could put three different types. You could put one type of chocolate and two types of candy and then put a single gumball machine next to it if you want to approach it that way. There's a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. Shout out for saying my name the first. The first, for saying my first name right, the first try. Okay. Glad I got it right. <clears throat> when are we going to Vegas, Louis M? I'm going to Vegas next month. I'm going to the um, NBVA, the National Bulk Vending Association. They have a little thing going on. They have an event. So I'm going to go out there and speak with all the different vendors and the companies. See if I can come up with some contacts, some networks. Um, you never know. This is a great opportunity because there's going to be vendors from all over there and not just YouTube vendors, but just, you know, people who really have serious vending businesses who sell machines, sell products, all type of stuff. And uh, obviously a lot of the YouTube vendors will be there, like Brian LaRue from Vending Nation, Jamie Farnsworth from Farnsworthy Vending, um, Dominic Barbados. He's a vendor up in New York. He's going to be there. Uh, Mark Saito, Sharks Vending. My buddy Mark from Orlando, he's going. Um, it's a, a, a group of guys. I spoke with the guy, Neil, from All Things Gumball. I think he's going to try to make it there. So we're going to try to all get together, and we're going to go live when we're there. But uh, it's definitely, definitely going to be a fun time in Vegas. So I'll be there at the end of next month. Okay. New in your channel. Great content. Keep it going. Osvaldo Perez. Okay, awesome, man. Appreciate it. Passive income. Definitely love your content. So I've been busy. So I've been talking to this guy. Okay. So I've been talking to this guy about a soda machine for four days now. And we almost came to an agreement. I was supposed to go see the machine and the machine was stolen from him and scrapped. Storm. Yeah, sometimes you're going to have issues that pop up. I've every time I, I'm on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace pages, let go, offer up all those sites all the time. And I just randomly look through there and I'm always looking for different machines, seeing if I can find a good deal. I'm not in a hurry to get anything because you never want to be in a rush. That's when you make mistakes. You just want to kind of casually let it happen. And I don't mean just being lackadaisical about it, like just not putting effort. But, you know, don't rush into anything. If you see a good deal, you know, take your opportunity, bounce on your opportunity and make it happen. But uh, I'm always on there and I might look at a couple hundred machines and see what's going on in different places. And I might send messages to different people. And I'll, if they're asking this price, I shoot them a low number, what I think is worth. And, you know, sometimes I get lucky and then I go check it out. And sometimes we'll make a deal and it'll never go through. But it happens. Just keep looking. You'll find something else. Something better will come along. Maybe it wasn't meant to be in the first place. Should I start a vending business? Roberto. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's really up to you, man. You know, uh, you can't really let anybody answer that question for you because that's you know, a choice that you have to make, but it can present an opportunity whether you are going to get rich on vending machines or not. It's all about how large you're willing to expand and take it serious. But for the most part, it's usually used just to create some kind of substantial side income where you can take that money, invest back in and continue growing your vending business. Or once you get to a point where maybe you're comfortable, maybe you only want to get about like maybe you want to put out 20 gumball machines or something and you make a few hundred dollars a month extra and you take that money to pay a bill or you take it to invest in something else. Uh, it's just a side supplementary income. And then maybe you'll really get to get bit by the vending bug and want to get more and more machines and really get into it. So uh, the best way to the best way to really find out if it's for you is. Get one or two machines, three machines. Get a couple small machines and put them out or try for a soda machine or whatever it is you want to try one. You know, and if, if all else fails, you can still sell the machine and get your money back. And if it's not for you, 
<clears throat> have you been looking into placing the ATM you got? I actually have. At first, I got it because I was just going to put it in my um in the arcade that I've been trying to work on, looking for a spot for. But um, since I have it, it's kind of burning a hole in my pocket. So I've been going to a bunch of like convenience stores and gas stations, and I've been asking different people. But I've noticed that most of the places that I go into, I've probably been to about 20 of them already. And every one that I've been to, they all have ATM machines already. But uh, I guess I could try to undercut the other person, but um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just looking for a spot. When the right time comes, then I'll place it. So um, we're going to see how that comes. I'm, I'm definitely looking, though. I'm always looking. Just finished filming. Glad I, I was able to still catch you. Okay, man. I'm really upset because of what happened. But I feel bad for that guy, and I'm mad because I had a location set for the machine. Storm, what city and state are you in? Because I'm sure if you go on Craigslist or some kind of Facebook Marketplace pages and you type in vending machine for sale or coin-operated machine for sale, that something's going to pop up because I can go on. I got a handful of sites that I can go on and type that in, and all type of different machines will pop up for me. I can go to Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace pages, offer up, let go, and, and those are some of the main ones. And that's to get used. If all else fails and you want to get a machine new, you can go to eBay or Amazon and get it. Uh, you're probably going to pay a lot more, but the option is still available. <clears throat> Profit always changes per month. Um, it's not always going to be the same. It's going to vary depending on how many people use your machine per month. But you'll have locations that do better than others. It all really depends. The average the average that you're going to make out of a small machine like this here, the national average is $30 a month. And let's say that you're, that's like a dollar a day. And if you some places will do more, some places maybe do like, like, 15 to 20 some places will do less it all depends on how much foot traffic you get through there and sometimes you might have like i had one set up in a locksmith and that thing was making about like it's not even that many employees in there maybe like 10 but it was bringing me like between 80 to 90 or even close to 100 dollars a month just because there was one person in particular who was eating all the mike and ikes Every time I go there, I couldn't keep the Mike and Ike's full. I was there every month. So it just, it kind of just depends. But um, sometimes if you get a super great location, you can make like $150 out of the machine. If it's just, I had a, a gymnastics location with a bunch of little girls that were in there. Like almost like a hundred little girls went over there to do gymnastics. And then they had a waiting room where the parents would watch them through a window. And the parents would eat them and the, the little girls would eat them. And like it really made money there. Gyms, martial arts studios, uh, gymnastics places, car dealerships, flea markets can do well, especially if you get some that are open uh, through the week or, or more often than, than others. Mine was just open on the weekend, so it didn't make as much as it should have. It did pretty good for only being open on the weekend, but I could just imagine if it was open uh, at least five days a week. Is there anyone you recommend for placing full line machines? Um, as far as a locator, I, what city and state are you in? Six Path Sage. Tell me what city and state you're in. You can send me a, um, a friend request. I don't know if you're a friend with me on Facebook. Check me out on Michael Chrome on Facebook. Or you can join my Chrome Vending Facebook group. Uh, go on there and send a request if anybody wants to get in that group. It's for all type of vendors. It's vendors all over the world on there. People go on there and they post things. They ask questions. They offer information. If they're looking for machines, if they're selling machines, uh, stickers, advice on different types of machines. So <clears throat> go on there. Send me a request. Okay, here we go. I got a couple of people asking to join already. But yeah, go on there. Send me a request. Tell me your um city and state on there, and we'll see if we can find you a locator for that area. See if we can get you something located. <clears throat> exactly make that money. 
I'm okay. Okay, here we go. They're coming through now. <clears throat> How many machines do you have on, on location? I, I had over a hundred when I was just doing the um the bulk machines and I ended up downsizing. I sold a lot of them. And then I was losing a lot of locations too because places would go out of business and this and that. I had a lot of mom and pop places. But uh <clears throat> I broke down to probably like around maybe like 60 60 ish but i also have full line locations as well and a couple other machines that are out i don't um some places i don't film in when i go and do collections in them but um i got a couple i got a handful of places that i always film in and i don't have an issue with anybody letting me film in those places when i do collections but um i just did a few collections yesterday and today i had an opportunity to get out I needed to get out and do some collections. So I'll be putting that up soon. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay, I see y'all asking to join Chrome Vending Facebook group. I'm going to accept y'all as soon as we get off of here. <clears throat> What's going on, man? Okay, everybody's sending messages. Brandon B, do you have the tools to make the shirt decals? Okay, we got somebody who does shirts over here. Brandon B, he's doing a shirt business. Maybe I get some type of shirt. I need to get some other type of shirts. I got some ideas for some shirts. I got the chrome vending shirts with the quarter on them. I also have a collections day shirt where the O is actually a gumball machine. It's pretty cool. I got it in some other of my videos. But I got some ideas. I was going to start doing some, some shirts myself. But then I felt like I was going to be going backwards because I'm trying to get away from the active income and try to create more of a passive income as I can. What's the best way to clean melted Skittles out of a machine? When I bought when I bought a machine, one of them was covered in them. <clears throat> what you're probably going to have to do is just use a lot of soap and hot water and just scrape it out of there. You know, dig your hand down in there and scrape it out of there. Okay. That's what I do. I use a lot of hot water, scrape it out of there. I use a scrubber, get one of those Brillo pads. A lot of time that helps. And just take the whole machine apart, scrub it, spray it down, dip it in hot water, hot soapy water. What I do is I put the sink and I plug it and I fill it up with hot water and soap. And I just sit in there and let it soak. And I scrub them out real good and then I run them through the dishwasher. <clears throat> and that usually takes care of it. Okay, let's see here. Peter Adams. Awesome. Sent a dollar donation. I appreciate it, Peter Adams. Thanks a lot. Always appreciate the donations when people donate. That's awesome. So, thank you very much. Will you, will you present in Vegas or somewhere? Huh? Will you present or present in Vegas maybe I should go out there will you be present okay that's what I think in Vegas or somewhere maybe I should go out there I am making my way west yes I'll be there from the 26th the the event is from the 26th to the 28th 26 27 and 28 March 26th through the 28th that's a Tuesday through Thursday so it's during the week I wish it would have been on the weekend, but it's during the week. So I'll be out, I'll head out there Monday and I'll be there from the 25th, probably all the way to Sunday. I'm going to stay all week. <clears throat> so um, I'm definitely going to be out there. A lot of us are going to be out there. Like I said, Jamie Farnsworth, he's, Jamie Farnsworth, he's going. Um, I believe Ray is the entrepreneur is going. I was speaking with him on the phone and I think he's really he wants to go back also. Um, Jamie Barnes, I spoke with him, but the issue he's having is he's 18, so he's got an issue being in the casino, being under 21. Otherwise, he was going to go out there with us too. Uh, Brian LaRue from Vending Nation, Dominic Barbados, Mark Saito. Um, I think Neil from All Things Gumball, he's going to go as well. 
So it'd be cool to catch up with all those guys. I'm definitely going to be going live with all those guys when I get out there and um, trying to make as much networking connection as I can while I'm there with as many vendors as I can. Okay, the thing is that it's hard to find them down in South Florida for cheap. I was going for two fifty as well, two fifty for a soda machine. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's about right, around three hundred. I, I I usually put my limit around three hundred buying a used soda machine, unless I'm just getting a really nice one. Then I may go to five hundred. I've never really spent more than five hundred for a soda machine altogether. <clears throat> uh, the most I spent on a on a machine I bought that Sega combo machine that was already on location at the BMW location I paid 1300 for that but that's because it had the air vent system it was already on location and I just wanted to show what it'd be like to buy a route usually I just I buy the machine and set them up myself but I like to show all aspects of the business so I go in and I do the you know I do the different parts of the work just to show uh, each part of the business in different ways you can approach it. Peace out, everyone. Have a great weekend, Mike. You the king. Awesome, man. Have a good weekend. Uh, I heard a mention of a machine getting scrapped. I imagine there must be a code on the machines. There are on the locking mechanisms for whatever that is worth. Yeah, a lot of time there are codes, like if you got a, a machine that came from Pepsi or came from Coke, um, how it works is a lot of time, like after five years or whatever the limitation from that company is, it'll go to whoever the vendor was and it'll just get written out of the system. So a lot of time those older machines, those codes are not even any good because if it's a Pepsi or Coke machine, it's usually just written off and taken off of their system. <clears throat> Okay. Unknown Cali Life. Mr. Unknown Cali Life. What's going on, man? You try that handstand yet? <laughs> I have 21 older plastic triple heads. I'm picking up the beginning of the month for $250. Should I put them all out or keep a few for parts? Uh, if you can get them out, I would say put them out. Why keep them for parts? If I mean, if they all work, and you can get a location for it and have it making money, I would never deliberately keep a machine. If I have a machine in storage, it's just because I don't have a location for it yet. Or maybe it's something wrong with it that I can't get it on location until I get it repaired or take care of the issue. But if you have machines and you have locations for them, my advice would be put them out. Don't hold them. You can always get more machines or get more parts if you need them. Thinking about to invest... What you recommend to buy with fifteen hundred dollars to start, uh, as much as you can. I mean, try to find the the best deal as you can get, man. Um, it's really hard to say. I started with a seventy five cent triple head candy gumball turner, a candy machine turner, you know, twenty five cent turner, and I just found deals from there. So whatever you can find, man. I can't really say what to recommend because I don't know what type of deal you'll find. But if you actively search and actively look, you're going to find something good. You're going to find good machines. You're going to find good locations. And you might not find locations at first. Or you might just have to go with whatever you can get at first. But as you get better and better, more quality locations, you can rearrange your machines and move them around. What I did in the beginning, <clears throat> I just went for locations. I didn't even care. Whatever location I could get. And if I found a location that really wouldn't move a lot i would start out if i didn't think it was going to do much i wouldn't fill the candy all the way up because i didn't want my candy to go bad i would fill it probably like anywhere from one third to halfway up and i'd go back and check it after about like two weeks and see what it was doing and if it wasn't really moving then i would just place a gumball machine in there and i could leave the gumball machine sitting there for like six months seven months and I mean, I'm still making something out of it, but at the same time, I could put my money maker machine, my candy machine in a place that is actually moving. And that's kind of like what worked for me. But, you know, you just got to kind of see what will work for you. But that was just that's that was my experience. And that seemed to be the best for me. 
Just did my first collection on my two-head bolt candy machine today. $8 in Panama City Beach, Florida during the off-season at a restaurant that is doing limited hours. I felt like this was great. Panama City Beach. I used to live in Panama City Beach when I was younger. Uh, <clears throat> had a house out toward Laguna Beach. And um, I worked at a few restaurants out there. Runaway Island, Captain Anderson's, uh, over there by the marina when I was like a teenager. Panama City Beach. I had a lot of good memories over there. Shipwreck Island, Panama, up with a Miracle Strip. All down the strip. Kind of dead in the wintertime, though. TM guy, what's up, Mike G? What's going on? <clears throat> Okay, I live in South Florida near the Fort Lauderdale area. I'm only a couple hours away from you. I can only find machines on OfferUp, really. Uh, you might have to check a little higher. You might have to you might have to travel a little bit. Like a lot of time, I find I find deals in Ocala. I find deals in Gainesville, but I, a lot of my deals, a lot of the better deals that I found, have actually been in Orlando which is about an hour and a half from me. So I have to get the truck and I have to put the trailer on and go down there and just pick up machines sometime. I have to take that trip. And I've traveled, you know, as far as like two, two and a half hours sometime to pick up bulk machines. But I knew it was worth it in the long run for how many machines I got and for the price I got them at. It was worth the drive because I knew that I could sell some of them and end up placing, make my money back and place the machines for free that were left over. Should I buy new or used machines like gumball machines and stuff? Okay, <clears throat> when it comes to a full line machine, I think probably buying used a lot of time may be better, especially in the beginning, because they cost a lot more. But even though I started buying a lot of used machines, I think that if you have more time to renovate and paint and fix up the machine, and you just in less money, then you probably want to find a deal for bulk machines or maybe somebody getting out of the business and you could probably pick up a lot of machines real cheap. But you may have to put work into them. You may have to fix them up, paint them, clean them, do a lot of work. Now, for just a little bit more, you know, you could probably buy brand new machines of gumball candy machines. You'll pay a little bit more, but you know for sure that you're getting a brand new spanking new machine that it's not going to have issues. It's going to work. Um, you won't have to do any work to it, painting it, cleaning it, things like that. So either way can be good. Um, it just kind of depends where your money situation is, where your time situation is, and how nice you want the machine to look. Melbourne, Florida, an hour away from Orlando. Yeah, one of, I got a buddy lives over in Melbourne. It's not too far from me. It's like... Uh, Maybe like an hour and a half or so from me, two hours. Okay. Do you think the nice fancy spiral gumball machines are worth the investment? Uh <clears throat> I usually see those things listed for around three to four hundred dollars. I got mine for a hundred. And mine has a light on it, a light bulb. I actually changed the light bulb out. I put a colorful light bulb in there and it's got a speaker with Bluetooth on it and everything. And I put the chrome vending sign on it, fixed it up real nice. I haven't placed it anywhere. I was going to place it in to my own particular uh, arcade room that, like I said, I have plans of and I've been trying to build up. But um, I think that if you have a good location for it, it can definitely do good. If you get one of those set up like in a mall or something like that, maybe like in a skating ring or somewhere where, um, I don't know, maybe even like some kind of restaurant when people are going out, like a really busy restaurant. If you can get one of those placed in there, I think it can do good. Uh, definitely be careful about spending three to four hundred dollars on it, because you got to think to make even three hundred dollars in quarters. That's you got to make four times that amount to make just to make your investment back, plus the gum that you're going to put in it, the bags of gum. So. I mean, just to make your money back on the machine, you're going to have to make 1,200 quarters. To, and that's if you pay $300 for it. So just keep that in mind and how long it'll take you to get that back. The good thing is you don't have to go back and check it like every month or two. 
you can let something like that sit up for like a year and then you go back and check it and you'll be good. If you can get something like that in a Walmart or something, then maybe you could do good. Like I said, a mall or a strip mall or a real populated place. What's the best place for a gumball machine? Getting a Roadrunner five foot for one hundred twenty five dollars this weekend. Good deal. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's OK. A lot of those sometimes cost a little bit more. So it's not a bad deal if, if as long as everything works. If it's if it's got locks and keys, then, yeah, it's pretty good. What does a line mean? A line? What do you mean? Full line? Full line machines are snack and soda, if that's what you mean. I sent you a Facebook friend request. My name's David. Okay, I'll check it out as soon as I get off of here. Jim Herbeck. Is that how that's pronounced? What's up, peeps? What's going on? Zach's life. These videos are going to blow up. Keep up the good work. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I love the prophecy. I believe the same thing. Hopefully we get some people figuring out how to put some extra money in their pocket. Um, I just go out and I try to create some streams for myself. And, you know, maybe you all can learn from my experience if it's what to do or what even not to do. How do you feel about the charity boxes? It seems like a good way to get your feet wet. I know a lot of people that actually started with them. Uh, Jamie Farnsworth pretty much started with them. He didn't actually. He actually started with a triple head, but he moved quickly into the honor boxes. Uh, it's a young kid named Azan Khan. He's about 13 years old, and he does a lot of them. And he's figuring out how to make it work for him. I know a bunch of people that are doing them. Uh, I know uh, Brian LaRue from Vending Nation. He does a lot of the honor boxes. I personally have never done them. I, I've thought about doing them before, maybe getting about 10 of them just to have some videos on it, just to say that I've done that part of vending. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll do it one of these days. I'll just do a series on them, maybe get about 10 of them and go put them in places and see what they do. But um, right now, my attention is focused more on transitioning into more full line machines and more into arcade. And I'd really like to get into more ATM machines because the issue I have with full line, I like the soda aspect of it. The soda machines are awesome. The snack machines are a little more difficult. You have products that can go bad. You can get spoilages, write-offs, things like that. And sometimes it's really aggravating when you have your products are going bad. They're not selling like you want. Or you put some products in the machine and these sell and the others don't. So, uh, yeah, it gets a little aggravating. So I want to do something that I don't have to worry about perishable items. I like the claw machines because I can put stuffed animals in there. They're not going to go bad. Um, I like the arcade machines. I like coin pushers. The ATM machines, I love them because money's not going to go bad. People are going to always want money. So I definitely want to get into more of those. But uh, <clears throat> I mean, everything has its, is, everything has its, uh, its benefit. So honor boxes can definitely work good. And a lot of people prove that they've worked. I know people that have like 300 of them set up in a lot of places and they do really well with them. So, um, I mean, if you want to, but with those, the thing about those is you have to maximize your locations. It's all about quantity, 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 where with when you get into like full line machines and other machines where you're getting a dollar and more per van, those are cool, too. So uh, you just got to see which one's going to work for you. Thought you had to be 18 to gamble. Yeah, you uh, now you got to be uh 21. You got to be 21 in Vegas. 18 is like this for buying tobacco products and things like that. But um, I know it's 21 to get into casinos. Did you downsize your bulk vending because full line and soda machine are worth it more for your time? Yeah, I just it's uh, let's see how do I answer that question? Um I, I didn't 
completely get rid of all of my bulk machines because I have a lot of bulk machines that actually are bringing money. And I have some locations that weren't doing as well. And I just felt like in the locations that I had them, that they really weren't worth my time because I didn't have a lot of saturated machines in those areas. Some of the other areas that even I have some great machines and then I have some that don't do as well. I still kept those locations because they're still in the vicinity of other machines that are doing well. So for me, that made a lot of sense. Some of the other ones that I branched off in different areas and tried to build a route, a route around them, I didn't have quite as much luck with it. So I either sold the machine to some of the owners who own the, the business or I sold them to a couple other people that I know here that were getting into the business. And um, I just kind of wanted to back away from a few of those locations and help them get started as well. But um, definitely didn't want to be driving where I was driving for those few machines that weren't doing quite as good. And I did want to focus more of my attention to the full line. I keep seeing a for sale sign on your truck in the videos. Are you upgrading your vehicle? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I had I had a for sale sign on it because that was one of the the trucks that I ended up getting as a down payment on another vehicle, and I ended up making a good deal and ended up with a couple of cars out of the deal. I got a truck and a car out of the deal pretty much, but um, I ended up just using it to move my machines. And if somebody wants to buy it, cool, I leave the for sale sign on it. And if not, I just keep using it as a work truck. Um, if I do sell it, I'll find another truck that might be a little bigger. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Does AirVin cost anything? Yeah, AirVin costs per month. <clears throat> um, the way it works right now is... Um, it's somewhere between about 10 to 15 bucks a month. I don't know exactly what it is. I haven't switched the air vent over to my uh, phone yet because I'm buying the, the route from the guy and it costs $75 every time you switch a machine. But if I switch, let's say if I switch one machine, it's $75. If I switch five machines or 10 machines, it's still $75. So what I was doing is I'm, I wanted to wait a little while to see how this location performed. And after I have the machine for, you know, a couple more weeks and I see how it's going. If I decide that I want to move forward and buy some more of his machines for the price that he's selling them at, then I'll go ahead and switch more of them over. And one time right now, I'm just kind of checking the um, I get with him. And he sends me everything and I can see what it's doing on credit card. I can see what it's doing in cash. And I just go restock it for now. But we're kind of in limbo in the middle of our deal. I already paid him for one machine. And I'm moving forward with the other ones based on how this machine performs and how I like the system. But yeah, somewhere it's just like a credit card reader. It's somewhere about between 10 to 15 bucks a month. Just ignored my joke. Uh, must not have saw it. Let me sc scramble up here. Okay, I got another super chat. Let me see. <clears throat> Emmanuel Gonzalez. Thanks for answering my question, bro. Much love. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate the $5 donation. Always cool when people um, donate some money. That's, that's cool. I always appreciate that. So um, thanks a lot, buddy. Let's see, have you considered getting small vending machines that could go in laundry mats that sell detergent and products like that? Yeah, I tried to get into a couple of laundry mats around here, but a lot of them had already had some things going on. Um, I, I was definitely speaking with my girl and I was speaking with Mark Saito about maybe possibly doing something with, um, with a laundry mat. So maybe in the future for Chrome vending, there'll be a laundry mat with some arcade machines in there because it's definitely a thought. There's anybody who wants to check out anything about laundry mats. There's a guy, he's got a channel named Victor Nichols. And I think, I think he ended up getting his laundry mat for like maybe $6,000 or something like that. He bought one from somebody who was getting out of the business. I want to say he's up in Michigan. 
But um, he's got an awesome channel, and he talks about everything to do with laundromats. And that's just another form of vending. So if anybody is interested in getting like into a laundromat business, you want to go check out Victor Nichols. Tell him Mike G sent you if you go check out his channel. <clears throat> Leave him a comment. Tell him Mike G sent you. But um, yeah, he's got a lot of good videos on the laundromat business. He's like one of the realest ones. I talk with him on a regular basis, and um, he um he doesn't cut corners. He, you know, he gives you the whole business um straight to the point. Brian is getting rid of all of his machines. Yeah, but he's um he's definitely keeping his honor boxes. He 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 got out, he sold a lot of his machines, and he's moving to strictly more honor boxes now. Are coin pushers legal in Florida? I've wanted one, but I hear it's a gray area. Yes, yeah, a great. I got a I got a video on this actually where I break down the legal the legalities of coin pushers in Florida, and there's a lot of little um. Let's see how there's a lot of like you say a gray area that you can kind of get by on technicalities of things. It's not really considered gambling if it's an amusement machine. You can put on there if it's got a stop button, if it has a skill set button, if you can put the box on the top where you administer or you give candy per play, people can get candy per play, things like that, then it's not considered uh, gambling. It's considered a skills game and they're getting a piece of candy for it. But there are also things that you have to be careful if you put it in an establishment with liquor or an establishment with lottery tickets and that you just got you got to read it but um maybe you would want to get you an, an attorney uh, i just know that that with the law that i broke down was the one for florida so you would have to see how it is for your state um i know that claw kicker he's got a bunch of them and i know that he was up in michigan also but i think that he recently opened one up i think he shut down his arcade over there and opened something up over in um california but you just have to check for your area. Up to date machines cost five to six G's, and they make you use your money to fill the machine. Are you talking about the ATMs? The ATM machine? Yeah, definitely. They take fifty percent of your profit because they are taking care of the back end. Um. Let's see here. You have to have so many people using the machine, like 200 people a day, to make it worth your while. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I know it's the same thing in the vending business. People talk about this machine they like. They don't like this machine. I mean, I guess it's just each person has, feels a different way about different machines. So, I mean, it depends on your location. I've had people tell me that I can't make money with vending. It's a scam and this and that. And... You know, just because it didn't work for them doesn't mean that it can't work for me. And I've definitely made it work for me. Um, it brings me a lot of side money. And the more machines I get placed, the the more profit that it pulls in. So I just want to have my hand in all type of different ones. I like to find out for myself. I place a machine. If it makes me money, then cool. I've um, I spoke with Carrie Buck recently. She has a, a YouTube a channel about ATM machines and she speaks about how many I think she has about 20 of them out and she says that she averages somewhere around three to six hundred dollars per month and just mom and pop locations and she has a couple strip club I think she has two strip clubs that she does like she does a few thousand a month in that location so I mean it's all about where you get your machine placed and what kind of deal you strike up if you're doing 50 percent commission with your location you're losing, you're eating into a lot of your profit there. Me, I don't pay commission at any of my locations. Um, I try to always avoid it. I know a lot of people feel like that's the only value they have to offer. So they go straight in and they say, hey, I'll give you 10% or I'll give you 15% or whatever percent they offer that right off the rip. Me, when I go in, I try to offer other areas of value and try to get my machine placed in there for free. And that kind of really helps a lot. <clears throat> How much in profit do you make in a vending machine? Okay, I just showed you uh, with the Mike and Nikes how much one of these slots can make. Uh, you pretty much want to double to triple your money, especially with the with the bulk candy. If you're dealing with a full line snack machine and soda machines, 
you probably want to try to at least like try to double your money. Um, I'm not really sure if you can triple on everything, but if you can double to triple, I got some products where I triple, some products where I double, some products where I might not quite double, but uh, it still makes sense with the other products that I double and triple on. So it's all about the product choices you make when you go into a Sam's look to see how much each product is, how much you're paying for it. And think about how much you can realistically sell that product for in the machine at whatever location you're placing it in. And if it makes sense that you're making a profit, you don't want to be making like 15 cents profit. Like if you have one or two items in there where maybe you only make 15, 20 cents profit, it's cool if you have another one where you're tripling or quadrupling your money, then it kind of balances out. But you don't want to have a lot of things in there that you're only making like a few cents profit. You want to really try to make a lot more than that. <laughs> How much do you bench and squat? Uh, not as much as I used to. I try to stay away from this super heavy squatting and benching. I don't want to end up with problems in my joints anymore. But uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh oh. Infinite value, three ninety nine. I appreciate the the super chat donation. That's awesome. I always appreciate it. Thank you for it for anybody who would even you know consider donating even a penny. That that's cool, man. So uh, I appreciate it. What's your best pitch to place gumball machines? Uh, <clears throat> when I go into a location, it's all pretty much the same. Um, in the beginning, you know, I would go in. And I would I would just walk in and ask to speak with whoever owns the place or whoever the person in charge was. And I tell them, I'm, you know, hey, my name is Mike G. I, I'm the owner of a local. I have a local vending business and I'd have my shirt on. I'd have some cards with me. Chrome vending. Here's my card. Um, I have a local vending business. I have a bunch of candy machines. And I was wondering if maybe you'd be interested in me placing one in here. And when I go in, I'm always looking for a place to place it immediately if they got room or space, you know, maybe to fit nice over there. It could be a luxury for your customers or your employees, an amenity to them. Maybe they're hungry while they're working and they want to go over there. They don't have time to go to lunch or something. They just want to get a quick little snack to go put 25 cent in there, get a little sugar going and boom, they have another little burst of energy to make it through the rest of the day. Things like that. Sometimes things like that are good to have a little snack. And I have I offer all type of different candy. I can put gum in there, Mike and Ike's, Runts, jelly beans, peanut M Ms, and then I give them a list of things. And uh, you can even have a portfolio set up where you can show them photos of the machines that you have. Uh, me, I always have them on my phone. I can show them right there. I also me I have the luxury of showing on my YouTube channel, so that helps me as well. And just be personable and friendly with the people. Don't go in there really like you're just trying to sell something. Go in there and be friendly. Just have a conversation with them. Just talk to them normally. And I go like that. And a lot of time, if the people see that you're a straight shooter, then a lot of time they're like, yeah, you know. I also tell them that I don't want to misconstrue the point that um, I'm placing vending machines for a charity and that's it. Because some people, you know, they think um, I tell them that I do associate myself with a charity. But I don't lead them to believe that, OK, I'm putting this in here and everything that it makes is going to a charity. I tell them I put this in here. This is my business. But since I do have to pay taxes at the end of the year with my LLC for my business, what I do is I take a percentage of that money and I donate it to a local charity, which a lot of people are familiar with Clint Hart around here in my city. And even if they don't know them, it's cool. And I tell them, you know, it feeds. We feed forty-two indigent families every year around Christmas time, and I donate to that. And um, you know, a lot of people like to feel like they're donating without actually having to come out of their pocket. So if they can help out by me placing a machine in their business, sometimes they're happy with that, and that's all it takes. <clears throat> as far as a full line machine, when I roll up to a business. I see people that are outside and I ask them, excuse me, do you work here? If they tell me yes, do y'all have soda, snack machines in here, things like that, vending machines? And they may tell me, yeah, they may tell me no. If they say no, would you be interested in having something like that in here? What do you think? Who would I speak to about asking something 
uh, about placing some of those. And a lot of time people will lead you in the right direction. VinQuest, bar breathalyzer machines. What's your opinion? Uh, I know I know a lot of people have been investing in them. I had a few people telling me that they invested in them and um, haven't heard much on the follow through with it. But um, I think anything can do well in the right location. It's just like I say, location, location, location. Location is the key. <clears throat> BK Vending. What's going on, man? Uh, my 10-year-old son just got his first location on Monday. Anyone can do it. Definitely. I mean, a vending machine business is one of the easiest things that you can start. There's very little upfront uh, capital that you have to invest. You could probably find a small machine. You can get lucky and find a gumball machine. Maybe somewhere between $25 I've seen to maybe $40, $50 for a machine. And then you invest in a little candy for less than a hundred bucks. Like you can start the business. So it's very little upfront money. You can get it. All you got to do is go in and ask someone if you can place it. How many of you know people that have businesses? How many people know people that own a barbershop, that own a hair and nail salon? Somewhere that you can place it. A restaurant. Maybe one of you know somebody that has a mom and pop restaurant. You can place it right by the cash register when they're checking out. Uh, it's very simple to start. And then you take the money that you're making from that and go and buy another one. Do you have any machines you can sell me to get started? Robert Williams, where are you located? What city and state? If I sell a machine, it's only going to be for local pickup. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to ship them or anything like that. I, I do put links in my description. If anybody wants to buy any new ones, I always add links in there. There's links in a lot of my descriptions. Scroll to the bottom of the video and hit the little arrow and there'll be a, a description section below. And I leave links down there. You can click on it and buy it from Amazon and they'll ship it right to your house. Something like that can work good. Uh, and you know you're getting a brand new machine. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mike. Infinite value. Awesome. No problem. Darren Platt. What's up, Chrome? What's going on? Jacksonville, North Carolina. What is the best brand of vending machine? I mean, that kind of, that all depends. A lot of people like different types of machines. Are you talking about full line machines or are you talking about bulk machines? Uh, a lot of people don't like the Vinstar machines. And I know why, because they do have their issues. They're faulty. They have the uh, the plastic flaps. But if you order the stainless steel flaps, I've been meaning to do a video on it. I just, I got so many things on my plate right now. It's hard to really like pinpoint and get to it. But I need to, um, I need to order the stainless steel ones. I've been meaning to do it. You can get three of them for $19.99, but the stainless steel flaps, when you put them on there, you can grab the flap and lift up and it will not break off. You'll lift the whole machine before it breaks off. So I definitely, I'm definitely going to try to get to, to it. I'm going to get some of those stainless steel flaps and put them on there, but I just invest, I've been invest, investing more time into my full line and trying to make that transition. I just got a, uh, I just got a pinball machine the other day because this guy was asking me for it at one of the bars I went to when I was trying to place my uh, my sit down multi K uh, Pac Man arcade table. But hopefully, I should be getting the video of placing that one soon. I work near a base and I run a company here. Military are sixty percent of my clients. Okay. See, that can do good. That can do good in a place like that. If you got a lot of passerby, those are the greatest location. V See, vending machine and candy, a lot of time candy is like an impulse buy. That's why they put it in grocery stores when you're checking out. That's why they put all the candy next to the, uh, the checkout. If you go to a grocery store, if you go to a convenience store, all right there in the front, you see all the candy because candy is a, it's, it's an impulse buy. And by painting your machine certain colors, you what you're doing is you're kind of enticing those emotions for people to act on their uh, to act on their impulse. So that's why I started painting a lot of my machines different colors when I was putting them out in the beginning. But knowing that you always want to uh, you always want to kind of do your research and know what drives your clientele. 
And by knowing that it's an impulse buy, a lot of times you can kind of place it in certain areas, placing it by the door, placing it in the cash, by the cash register if you place it in a restaurant, certain places that people are going to act on their impulse. Sean, what's going on, man? Good to see you on here. <clears throat> it's always hard to catch up with you, man. I guess it's because of our time difference that you're three hours behind me. <clears throat> By the time it's 12 o'clock here, it's it's only nine over there in Cali. Where are your most profitable, loca profitable locations for soda snack machines from one to 10? <clears throat> um, I guess uh, if you can get a dealership, something like that, dealerships seem to be pretty good. Um, <clears throat> gyms, gyms are good. If you can get a gym, people are, anywhere where people are always going to want to drink sodas, they seem to be really, really good. Um, factories and warehouses. I don't really have like a whole ton of locations for full lines, but um, I'm definitely building up. I definitely want to lean more towards the soda than the snacks because sometimes the snacks it just aggravate you. <clears throat> Thanks for doing this stream. Truly a mentor to many of us. Awesome, man. Uh, I try to try to give you as much good information as I can. Are the gumball machines and quarter machines worth it? Like I say, it's all about the location. If you get them in the right location, some locations you'll get them in. And you'll say, man, I'm glad I got this machine place. I'm glad I started doing this because you'll go in there and you'll get like stacks of quarters and you'll have people that would just always get them. And then you'll have some that will make you feel like, like I'm wasting my time. I, I got to get another location. So it's all like I say, it's all about the location. And then it sucks when you lose a good location. Finally got a new van. Hey, that's awesome, man. I know you were using your uncle's truck or something to, to go and fill up before just to carry your products. That's why I'm glad I got my truck. Sometimes I use my Infinity because it's an SUV and I could, I could pack a lot of stuff back there too. How do you determine how much a route should cost? Uh, <clears throat> You pretty much want to make your money back in about... I don't know. I'd say maybe like within six months. I don't, I don't want to be over a year trying to just make my money back from whatever I invested. If you can if you can see the records of what somebody is is generating on a monthly basis and then you kind of add that up based on what they're selling it for. You kind of want to have your money back within about six months. Me, what I was doing was I didn't want to just buy machines and place them and then just try to make my money back. A dollar at a time selling products. So what I would do is try to buy bulk machines, buy a couple large machines and maybe sell one of them and try to make the majority of my money back. So by the time I place it, I really got a good deal. And when I'm dealing with the small bulk machines, I'd, I'd catch people getting out of the business who had like maybe 10 or 20 or more. And I knew that if I bought them for a good price, I offer, I lowball them on a good price. And if they accept it, I bargain them down. If they accept it, I start placing the machines, selling them singles one at a time. I refurbish them, sell them single and make my money back. Like it's a, like if I'm selling a new machine and if I buy 50 machines, I might sell 10 or 15 machines and have probably my money back. And then the other 35 machines that I put up, I almost like I placed them for free, uh, except for the, the product that I had to fill in it. So it's all about your ability to hustle. If you can buy bolt machines and sell a few, try to make some of your money back like that. That way you're not waiting so long for your ROI. That's what kind of worked for me. Are you taking any investors right now? Um, I'll listen to what anybody has to say. Send me a message on my Facebook page, Michael Chrome, or, or join my Facebook group, Chrome Vending, and I'll accept you on there. And send me a message and we can talk about it. <clears throat> I think young on the go people like I think young on the go people like the convenience of vending. Yeah, 
Definitely. Even though, even elderly, even elderly people. Like I say, I have one. I have a machine in uh in the elderly home with sixty two years and older. So they're all seniors, and they even like the convenience of it because they don't have to get in their car and drive to the store, or some of them can't drive, and you know it just gives them an opportunity to get it right there. So definitely, apartment locations are good places. I'm trying to get trying to get one into the laundry mat. Of an apartment right now. Just got my first triple head location. So happy. Can't wait to have a second one. Bobby DA. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear a lot of people starting to get their businesses going. And what it is, is even if you just get one machine place, what it is, is a victory. And every time you have a victory, victories build confidence. So you always want to create victories for yourself in anything that you do. Every time you have an opportunity to create a victory for yourself, go after it. Create a victory, build more confidence, and just boost up more and more. I'm getting an ambulance tomorrow morning. I know, I know, ambulance. <laughs> hey, the space for my candy and gumball machine, I just make a video about and post it. You're getting an ambulance? You're getting a gumball machine and an ambulance? Is that what you're saying? I've never heard anybody do that. That that is interesting. OG Wano. This I want to hear more about. I don't know if you got a channel and you're gonna post a video. If you don't and you're not, you definitely gotta take some footage and post it to Chrome Vending because I wanna see this. How do you keep snacks fresh in a full line snack machine without expiration dates? <clears throat> Piss it pissing off a location you just have to check it pretty regularly when i go to sam's i did a video on this recently i'll go and a lot of time they'll put the the older date marks the boxes of snacks in the front and if you look it might say something like let's say i go into the store today all the ones in the front will say june and then if you look in the back it might have one that says august or september so i always reach to the back and i look at the date because I want to get the one that's the furthest away. Like, it's cool if somebody's buying them, buying the snacks for their kids' lunchbox or something, and they buy the one for June, because probably, most likely, if they buy it in February, it's not going to last them to June anyway. It's going to be gone by next month. So that's cool for them. But if you're in the vending business, you want to reach in the back and you want to look for those dates that are the furthest away. That way you have the longest opportunity to get rid of it. And Think about how often this product sells. Usually, if you're in the vending business, it's not really your first time. So, but if it is your first time, you know, look to the back and just, just get the furthest date you can and see if it's a product that sells. And what I do is I always ask people, I ask people the locations I go to, what type of things do they want to see in the machine? And if it's something that, that makes sense, then I definitely go with it. Take the product out and replace it with fresh product and remove the expired date on the snacks and place them at places that sell better. <clears throat> Another thing that you can do if you get expired snacks, what you can do is you can take a lot of the things that are start or that are expired or just expired and you can put them in one column and you can set a price on it and you can set everything to half price, mark it down or mark it down to like whatever, 30%. That way you can still sell it and you put on their expired snacks. So if anybody wants to buy that, it necessarily it's not necessarily bad just because it passed the date. But um, it still could be a good product. It's just past the expiration date. So you can mark it down to half price. If somebody wants it, they know what it is. And you put up their expired products half price or 30%. And that way you still don't lose completely everything. And it's still a write-off for your business. If you can't sell the product under a month, it's not worth it. Shouldn't be sitting long enough to go bad. Thanks, Mike. Love your videos. Milty, awesome, man. Are the credit card readers good to deal with? What's the processing fee for that? Usually they're about like $10 a month. And it's give or take. I know that if you have a, if you have a machine, you definitely want to have the bill acceptor on it. I have a machine where I have the bill acceptor. There's an issue with it right now. The coins and everything works, but I have to get the bill acceptor going. And there's places that I put up, and just with the bills, they do pretty good. But sometimes by adding the credit card, you can double your sales. 
So as long as you're making enough to cover the price of the ten dollars a month for the for the swiper, then I guess it kind of makes sense. If it's not covering it, then you kind of want to think twice about it. But if you got a pretty good location, a decent location, it's not in just a garbage location, then it's probably worth it. <clears throat> All right. So true. Tiny victories lead to major successes. All right, you about ready? All right. So how do you like Adobe Premiere? I think it's awesome. It's a lot more things that I'm capable to, to do with it than I did with the Kind Master. The only issue is I don't know how to do them all yet. But uh, I'm still learning. I knew I knew I was like a pro on the Kind Master. I learned how to do everything. I could edit my videos like this on there. I've been doing it so long. But since this is a new program, it's taking a little longer. I'm getting things. I'm starting to figure it out. So um, I know my videos have been kind of slacking because it takes me a little longer to get everything ready. But I got a lot of footage. So I have some videos coming out here real soon. I'm going to try to pick back up in March. Um, I definitely try to have a video out. I'm trying to put up a couple video uh, material over the weekend for the collections I just did and try to have some up, if not over the weekend, definitely the beginning of next week. But um, I do like the Adobe Premiere. It's just that, like I said, the learning curve has slowed me down. Okay. Keep posting, bro. I'll reach out to you, to your Facebook shortly. All right, Rob, Robert Williams. I'm looking forward to it. I doubt most people even look at the expiration dates. Probably only if it's stale. Yeah, a lot of times they don't. Um, but you just never know. So if it, if it is stale, you just kind of want to be careful with that. But um, I'm getting ready to get off of here. I've been on here going on two hours now, so I hope it was um I hope it was something that was beneficial that you can see how much you can actually make just with the with the boxes of Mike and Ike's that I started out with in the beginning, and how I showed you how much each one of them was making. But uh, that's just if you use these, and this isn't even the cheapest way to buy it. I just wanted to show that even if you buy them like this, you can still at least double your profit on what you're selling. So. <clears throat> I'm getting ready to get off of here. I appreciate everybody for coming on. I appreciate the people who, who donate. I mean, that's always cool. Y'all don't have to do that, but I appreciate you that you do, definitely. So it just shows it's kindness coming from the heart. So that's awesome. It's definitely appreciated. I appreciate everybody coming on here, asking great questions and great comments. But I'm going to get off of here. I have a video up. I'll be working on it over the weekend. I'm going to try to get back on here and start going live more because I know a lot of people have questions. Uh, appreciate all my viewers and subscribers. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for joining me tonight. And I'll see y'all next time. Make another video.